DJI Ground Station Pro remains one of my favorite mission planning apps, despite all the really bad reviews it gets on the App Store. So one of the reasons that I like it is that there's just so many different parameters that I can change in there and that I'm in control of. So let's have a look at the app itself. When I, when I go into it, you do need to log in, so you need to create a free account, or you can actually go with the paid version as well. I've only got the free account here. I'm gonna go into my missions down the bottom there, and it should pull up a list of the missions that I've flown previously, but because the app's recently been updated and I only have the free version, I appear to have lost them all. But that's okay, because I'm gonna go in and show you how we create a new mission anyway. So I'm gonna come over here over to the right hand side and head into the Great Barrier Reef to an area where I'm really comfortable making missions and that's because I've flown here so many times. So welcome to Heron Reef on the Southern Great Barrier Reef here. Now it's important that when you first open the app that you do have internet connectivity because that's going to allow you to cache those images in the background. So even if you're out in the field and you're unable to get Wi-Fi connectivity, you'll still be able to see the maps where you're going to create your flight plans. So when I'm generally happy with the area where I'm going to plan my flight, all I'm going to do is press down the bottom left hand side, press on that plus button there and that's going to ask me if I want to create a new mission and I'm going to create a photo map using the tap option here. So I'm just going to tap on the screen and that's going to start my very first mission here. And the thing that I really like is all these different options on the right hand side that I have control over that I'm going to be able to alter. Now what I'd like to do is I'm just going to move this and zoom in a little bit more because the first thing I'm going to do is actually just change the shape a little bit of the area that, that I'm interested in mapping. So you can see that I just touch on those big white circles there and that's going to allow me to change the shape. Now if I do want to completely change the shape, not just the orientation, I can just click anywhere on those sides and add in extra points. And you can see as I do that, that blue area changes, but then also the flight lines, which are these green ones coming up and back in this lawnmower pattern. And that's so typical of what we do when we do aerial survey. So let's have a look at some of these options on the right hand side. So first of all, I can change the mission name. So if this is something that I'm going to want to fly again and again, and it's a mission that I do want to save, I can quite simply tap on the edit button there and change the name of the mission. So let's call this Heron and happy with that, tick that, and now I've got that name in there. Now at the moment, you can have a look at these, these options up the top here, and these, these are just information points that are going to change as we change the individual parameters. The first thing that I'd like to change when I come down is the camera model, because I fly a Phantom 4 Pro, for example. So let's tap on that and also fly the Mavic Pro. And as you change these different camera models, because they've all got different fields of view, you'll see some of the, the items up the top change as well. And the key thing that we really want to be able to do is to understand what the flight length is. And if you scroll over in particular, the estimated flight time. So I, I know that I'm fairly comfortable flying the drone for say about 16 minutes or so, depending on how far away I am from the takeoff and landing point so that I can return home. But I'm looking for a flight plan of about, four to, about 16 minutes or so. You can see it's estimated 50 photos here as well. Now I'm quite, ha quite happy with that shooting angle of parallel to the main path. So that means it's going to be taking photos as it goes with the the long edge of the photo in the direction in which you're flying, which is sort of the normal way that you would hold a camera in the landscape style shot. Now, th this capture mode here, there's three different options here. So if you're flying at a really low altitude and you, you want to fly quite quickly, often what we'll do is to fly and then when you get to a point where it's time to take a photo, the drone will hover and capture the photo there. And that's really good for very, very clear photos so we don't have any blur. Now if you're flying at a higher altitude it's less of an issue and you're less likely to get any image blur from movement. But you can choose to hover and capture a point and if you do that your flight is going to take a significantly longer period of time. 
You can also choose to capture it equal time interval or equal distance interval, whatever's going to work for you. But just note that these, do, these parameters do change up the top as well. Now, coming down, we can also change the altitude that we're flying at. So this, this has defaulted to, to 119.4 meters. So that's, that's looking at the maximum height that we can fly here in Australia without getting exemptions. So I'd actually like to change that. So how about if we move that flight altitude down, and as I do that, as I move that little dot down, you'll be able to see two things, or actually see a few things. So the height changes, so it now comes, comes in at 70 meters altitude, and the speed decreases as well as, as I decrease the altitude. Now when you do that as well, you'll see the, the length of the flight time increase because as the drone is closer to the ground it's it's going at a slower speed so we're not getting that image blur and you'll also see that the lines here in this image are going to get closer and closer together and that's to maintain a set overlap to to make sure that we're able to mosaic the data when we when we finish it now, the other thing that we can do is if we know exact locations of, of areas in which I need, to, in, I need to fly. So for example, this point here, you'll see the coordinate, coordinates of it, the latitude and longitude down the bottom right hand side here. So if I knew the lat and long of a location that I needed to get to, I can manually enter those in as well. So that's a really handy option, though it's a, it's a little bit inconvenient. If you have the paid version, you can upload a KMZ or a shapefile there as well. Now, if that point, uh, if I'm not happy with that point, I can also just simply delete that and the line will pop back in as well. So let's make that a little bit tidier and delete that one too. Now, I can also head over into the advanced section and this is where I can alter the overlap of my photos because I actually like to have 85% overlap on my photos when I'm flying on the reef. So let's pop that up there. And this it's a bit of a pain with fat fingers on these little on these little slider bars here, but you kind of get used to doing it and it's a little bit of a challenge. And you can also actually tap on the numbers itself on this latest version and click plus or minus, which helps just to make those fine adjustments there as well. If you'd like to change the course angle, so this is particularly handy in a marine environment because we don't want to be flying directly into the sun and get a lot of sun glint as well. You can you can change this course angle here. Now you'll see the flight time is also changing as I change that course angle. So sometimes you want to just go with the most efficient course angle, which might be something like that. And you can see that the flight time is significantly less by doing that as well. So it's estimating it's gonna capture 106 photos over those, looks like three three lines that the drone is going to take there as well. Now, one of the things I sometimes find is that when I look at that, I think, oh no, I really actually need to make that area slightly larger because that's capturing the area that I'm interested in, but only just, and, and you really do want to capture wider than the area that you're interested in to make sure that you're getting decent overlap because the edges of your mosaic are never gonna be quite as good as the center parts. So I generally make it a little bit bigger and you'll see that that's now added in an additional flight line. Sometimes that can be a real pain because now you can see that the starting point is all the way out here on the edge of the reef. And it's kind of a bit of waste of flight time if I'm going to take off here to fly all the way there and not take photos. But that's kind of the way it is. So you can test and adjust and have a bit of a play there to make sure you get the, the flight just as you like. Now, if you're happy with that, you've got two save options. So you can save the mission just by itself in the upper left there, or you can actually save these parameters as your default as well, which can be really handy if you're pretty much all the time you're flying with that same angle, the same altitude and all that sort of thing. Now, when you're happy and you've, you're ready to fly, it's pretty simple to go ahead and do that. Now, I'm not connected to a drone at the moment, so it's not gonna work for me, but all you do need to do is click on the airplane up in the upper right-hand side there, and it's going to check that you're connected to the drone, check that you've got the, the right number of satellites to be able to run this mission. And I tend to like to fly the mission manually to start with and then when I'm ready to go I'll hit start to fly and the drone will hit off and do its job. 
One thing I've, I did actually neglect to mention, it did, does say what, the, what, you, what you want the drone to do at the end of the mission. So I usually just get it to hover and then I like to manually fly it back as well and that just gives me extra practice on the sticks. But you can get it to return to home if you like. At any stage, if the drone's doing something that you don't like or you want it to come home anyway, all you need to do is to flick it in and out of, of, the, of the mode that it's in. So hit it into sports mode or something like that. And then it, then it will just hover in place and wait for your next command. So get on the sticks and fly at home. So good luck with your flight planning and I hope that's useful for you.